with this return of tourists. Uh, how has the pickup been, and when does he expect things to get back to pre-pandemic levels? You have to look at Macau. You've got to dissect what Macau is. I mean, pre-pandemic, you had a very large junket uh, segment, which is now gone. Um, but that segment created very high numbers in terms of revenues, but less uh, success in terms of bottom line, in terms of EBITDA or income. So we live in a new world today, which I don't know if you'll reach the same levels of top line. But I think you can exceed the EBITDA numbers of 19. I think that'll happen sometime, you know, I don't know if it's 23 or 24 or 25, known as a crystal ball. All I know is the trajectory right now of revenues and profitability here is through the roof. Everyone's happy with numbers. Just the, May, the May numbers will come out. I assume they'll be the highest numbers since we reopened. And uh, we believe in the quality of our product, our people, our hospitality to drive our business. And we're very, very comfortable where we're going to end up in Macau long term. You know, whether it's July or this idea of predicting and being definite about the timing is unnecessary. We know we'll get there. The road is clear. You've got 10-year license. So yep. Share some of your diversification plans. How much money have you pledged? It's irrelevant because we pledged what we pledged will we we spend much more. Our, this idea that we pledged three billion or four billion, it's irrelevant. We're going to spend a lot more than that, Macau, if we're if we're able to. We are here for the long haul. We've always been a believer in this market. Our actions speak very loudly. We invested billions in this market in '19 when everyone said, "Oh, you can't invest before the license is renewed." Sheldon never worried about that. He said, we'll be fine in Macau for years to come, and we were. And all these gloom and doom forecasts about what was going to happen in the licensing process, it ended up being nonsense. Um, we have a 10-year license. We hope to be here for many years beyond that, and we'll invest heavily beyond our commitment to the government. If given the approval, we'll build more buildings here. We'll build more non-gaming amenities. So we're huge believers in this market, and the fact we're sitting in Kotai is due to Sheldon's vision of building huge resorts, scale resorts. You know, people in Hong Kong 20 years ago couldn't fathom that Macau could be retail, restaurants, spa, conventions, hotels. No one in Hong Kong believed in this 20 years ago. They kind of chuckled. Today, the, the growth of Macau is uh, no one questions it anymore. It's a very dominant, very important market, and we, contend, we will continue to invest heavily if we're able to. How has business changed pre-COVID mm. compared to post-COVID? What are some of the considerations you have to make? I'm not sure it's changed that much. I mean, we still rely on great product, great hospitality, diversity of product, quality of product. In the end, we're in the tourism business, and what drives tourists is product. Um, people want to shop, people want to eat, people want to spa, they want to come for business, they want to stay in great hotels, and maybe they gamble, maybe they don't. Uh, we build products that speak to everybody, and the, the goal is, you'll see in the Londoner, the goal is the top tier product wins the, wins the fight. And I think in our business, it's always been that way. You know, the best products win. Our goal is create a must-see destination product that caters to the highest end of the market. And whether it be international tourists or people from Hong Kong or China, it's, it's all the same to us. The product dictates our success. And so we're product-centric, always have been.